Are you looking for an electric van? Do you want one that's comfortable and smooth to drive, offers brilliant zero emissions range and a class leading turning circle? Well, this is the LEVC VN5, and in today's review, we're gonna find out if this ticks every single one of your boxes. So the VN5 is the first electric van from the Coventry-based London Electric Vehicle Company who are primarily known for manufacturing what is perhaps the world's most advanced taxi, the all-electric TX. As such then, this is a really interesting offering. Its key rival is the Ford Transit Custom Plug-in Hybrid, which is one of the only other range-extending vans on the market at the moment, but it is an electrified version of an existing combustion-powered model. This VN5 then was built from the ground up, first and foremost, to be a plug-in hybrid. It offers a larger battery delivering more and further electric range and it boasts a rather distinctive and well quite frankly strange design that is going to make it stand out on UK roads and from the competition. There's two questions that we need answers for then. Who exactly does this van appeal to and is it better than its rivals? We'll be answering those questions in this in-depth review by exploring the exterior and interior design, how much stuff you can cram into that cargo space, the drivetrain on offer and how efficient that is, the tech on offer and how that helps with the driving experience and the different variants and optional extras available that you can take advantage of to really make the most of your configuration. Let's start with the exterior design then. So this front end is gonna be very familiar to you, especially if you frequented our great capital recently and that's because it's based on the renowned TX Taxi. It's quite a striking design, isn't it? Let me know what you make of it in the comments below. So according to LEVC, this is to provide visual evidence of your company's green credentials. So if you really want to stand out with your switch to electric, then this is probably the best option. Some of the key highlights of this front end then include these massive LED headlights that come as standard. They're automatically adjustable as well, which is really handy. It's one less thing the driver has to do. Um, I'm just going to unlock the car then to highlight the daytime running lights that also come as standard. That's the strip there that's just surrounding the circular LED. I really like the overall design of that and it's great that daytime running lights do come as standard. Uh, you also get automatic windscreen wipers as well. As you can see then there's a rather large bonnet and at the bottom there you've got the LEVC badging as well as an imposing upright grille. Uh, both of those things look like something you'd find on a latest Bentley. Um, and then we have the E-City badging. So LEVC classifies this van as a range extended electric vehicle. Uh, it's driven primarily by electricity, but it features a small 1.5 litre petrol engine and this acts as a generator to extend the range as much as possible by charging that battery. Uh, we'll tell you a bit more about the drivetrain later on in this review. So the front of the car is actually home to the charging port. So if we pop this flap open on the right hand side and this bit at the top open. So this port here supports 11 kilowatt AC charging and at the bottom here, Pop that open and you can then plug it into a 50 kilowatt DC charging uh, for rapid charging times. And I'll tell you a little bit more about those later on in the review. Uh, on the right hand side then, you can configure the car with an optional charge demo or charge dim move uh, charging port. Uh, we haven't done so with this particular configuration. So when we open that up, it just is a bit of plastic in there. But thankfully, you can shut the flap and forget that exists. Just below the front grille then, we've got some satin black front bumpers, which are made of some quite cheap plastic, so not too sure what to make of those. But what I do really like is the Alpine white body color. It's the standard color that you'll get with your initial configuration. Uh, it's a solid paint. There's a couple of other choices as well, including pillar box red and bristol blue, both very, very nice indeed. There's a few metallic options as well, including three different shades of gray and an ocean blue, which really pops. And it's what you'll see in a lot of uh, the promotional material for the VN5. We'll touch on dimensions briefly then. So the height of the vehicle is 1,990 millimeters. So just 10 millimeters less than the Ford Transit Custom Fev. And it's a little bit higher than the Vauxhall Vivaro E. Uh, in terms of width then, we're looking at 2,000 
and 83 millimeters so it isn't as wide as either of those models which could be a benefit for you as we make our way around to the side profile let's check out these wheels so these are 17 inch black steel wheels uh, design wise nothing too extravagant going on but i do have to highlight that this van offers the best in class turning circle of 10.1 meters and it is quite incredible you'll find out why as we get to the driving experience section but it is my favorite feature of this van it just makes it so easy to get out of those really tight parking spaces and negotiate narrow city streets it's quite amazing i really like the dynamic lines running along the side profile in the middle here and at the bottom as they merge with that side door it gives the design a really really clean look uh, the body structure then is made of an anodized aluminium and these are sheet molded composite panels uh, reducing corrosion and dense so if you accidentally prang your ladder or pallet against here it shouldn't show up on the exterior which is really important especially if you decide to brand the vehicle with your company logo and colors let's get this side door open so it opens 100 millimeters wider than the ford transit custom plug-in hybrids at 1128 millimeters uh, but at the entry height isn't as high at just 1199 millimeters overall though this was enough space to fit this pallet as you can see down there we had to turn it a little bit to get in but it slot in eventually of course you can just slide it through the back which we'll show you in just a moment uh, you can actually configure a side door on the other side of the van but that's very much an optional add-on you don't get that with any of the trim levels so you have to weigh up whether that's worth it for you but i'm really impressed with how this side door has been implemented i will say though that you do have to slam this door quite hard to get it to shut properly so you can see uh, that's still not even shut so i'm gonna have to do that again there we go and now that's completely flush uh, with the exterior so that is now shut so do bear that in mind i have hopped in the van a few times ready to set off and it comes up on the uh, dashboard saying that that door isn't shut so do give it a good slam and make sure that's locked in so in terms of the length of the van we're looking at 5233 millimeters so it is longer than its key rivals the vivaro e and the custom plug-in hybrid uh, the curb weight then so that is the overall weight of the van including the fuel tank and all the standard equipment that can come out between 2070 kilograms to 2222 kilograms so it's no by no means a light vehicle but i mean given the size of this thing you wouldn't really have expected otherwise let's head around to the back then and i'll show you the load space let's admire this magnificent rear end with the levc and vm5 badging displayed rather prominently though you probably don't care about that so let's get these doors open these are rear 60 40 split doors and as you can see they come out quite wide so the 40 door there's a latch on the side here just press it in like that and there we go folds out completely and as you can see we've got quite a lot of space to work with here so what are the dimensions of this load space well the length is around 2440 millimeters the width is 1570 and the height is 1370 millimeters so you get quite a lot of space to play with here as you can see we've packed it already with our camera equipment as well as a pallet that's right at the back there a toolbox and a ladder and we've still got loads of room to play with about half of that load space and we can continue to pile it even higher we're barely barely touching that roof lining there uh, the load space volume then we're looking at up to 5.5 cubic meters and that's enough space to fit two euro two two euro three or three euro one pallets so i hope this gives you a really good idea of how much stuff you can cram into the back of this van well we're looking at up to 830 kilograms depending on your trim level and specification and the roof up there can hold 100 kilograms so that's perfect for a ladder or something like that so the loading floor is very flat so this is great for sliding something through like a pallet all the way into the back of that loading area though because it is quite slippery you may find that objects that haven't been strapped down to the floor or the sides are going to roll around while on the go so do take advantage of the four tie loops or six mounting mounting points uh, dotted around this cargo space oh and don't worry too much about loading stuff into the back here in the dead of night or on a grim winter's morning uh, because that led light which is unfortunately off we'll get some b-roll of that for you is really bright so you can easily see what you're doing in the back here in poor visibility conditions so guys what do you make of the vn5 so far do let me know 
in the comments below. Are you impressed with the design? And are you impressed with the amount of stuff you can cram into the load space? Um, if you'd like to explore your options a bit more closely with a vehicle specialist, there's lots you can do with this van. Uh, you've got the trim levels, but then you've got all the optional extras that you can add on top of those. So if you'd like to explore that a bit more closely with one of our vehicle specialists, then do be sure to get in touch on 01903 538 835, or you can click the pop-out banner, it's just up there, and you can book a date or time to chat with our team. Okay guys, I think it's about time we got behind the wheel of the VN5 and we can test out that drivetrain and the driving experience. Let's do this. So guys, we're behind the wheel of the VN5. The first thing I want to highlight to you is the automatic transmission. Uh, because this is an electric van, you get auto and it's very, very smooth. It's so relaxing to drive. So it's absolutely perfect for slow start stop city driving. Um, this is mainly due to the accelerator pedal, which is nice and soft. You don't have to put your foot down on it too hard to get some oomph. Um, on the other hand though, the brake pedal is pretty firm, so that does take a little bit of time to get used to, um, especially if you already drive perhaps, you know, a Ford Transit Custom and you're transitioning into this car, that's gonna take a little bit of time. So as you're approaching a junction, do make sure to slow down a little bit sooner than you normally would in that transitional phase and then you'll slowly but surely get used to that. So I do recommend taking advantage of the two-stage regen braking uh, to activate that you just get the gear selector here and you just push that to the right hand side and that way you're ensuring that you're harvesting as much energy back into the battery as you possibly can. Uh, you will notice that the car slows down a little bit as you put it into this mode. Uh, as such you do lose a little bit of performance by doing so but it more than makes up for it in the amount of energy that is put back into that battery and as such more range that you get on your travels. Um, it's really satisfying seeing uh, the lever on the left hand side of the driver display go up as you're traveling along taking advantage of that regen braking. So the suspension is surprisingly smooth for a vehicle of this size. If you haven't strapped any of the objects at the back down properly you will feel those flying around as you go around a tight turn or corner but generally speaking those 17 inch uh, steel wheels do a fantastic job at isolating the impact of any humps and bumps that you'll come across in the road and as such the driving experience is really relaxing considering you're driving a van but well, I guess that's great for city driving and long motorway commutes as well so really great job um, LEVC for delivering such a relaxing driving experience. What's visibility like then? Well, it's absolutely brilliant. So you get a nice commanding view of the road ahead thanks to that really wide windscreen. The mirrors are nice and big too, so you get a good view of what's behind you. Uh, my only complaint really are these side pillars. Absolutely fine for normal driving, but when you come to a junction or traffic lights, I am having to sort of lean over like that and round to really see what's to the left or right of me, which is a little bit of a shame, but I mean, it's a minor gripe. I can deal with that for everyday driving. I Overall visibility, absolutely brilliant. What is the steering like? Is it hard? Is it soft? Well, it's very soft and I assume that's due uh, because of that really, really good 10.1 meter turning circle. But this is my preference when it comes to steering anyway. Uh, it just makes the car so easy to drive. There's no pressure on the steering wheel at all. Um, it's really easy to fling this van around corners and tight turns when you need to as a result of that soft steering. Yeah really impressive how it's been implemented. So this van makes some very strange noises I have to say. So the electric battery does hum as you build up to speed, especially as you merge onto a dual carriageway or motorway, you're definitely going to notice this. Um, when the generator kicks in, this makes a little bit of noise as well. It's kind of all over the place, but thankfully the cabin does do a really, really good job of isolating these noises. And if you've got something like the radio or some music on, you're hardly going to notice them, just adding to that a relaxing driving experience. So parking is where things get interesting. Uh, there is a little bit of a learning curve required due to the sheer size of the vehicle. Uh, but you'll find that due to the brilliant turning circle, it is surprisingly easy to get out of those really narrow and tight parking spaces, which is great. And it's a big advantage that, is, that this van has over its key competitors. Um, one major complaint though that I have with the, uh, the LEVC VN5, 
are the lack of front and rear parking sensors as standard. So these come with the city trim upwards and they can be configured as extras, but I really do feel like they should have been added with that base specification just to help uh, customers who are transitioning to a much larger van like this one uh, get used to it a lot quicker because it is quite difficult at first to figure out the positioning of the van. Um, also the HD reversing camera is locked behind the top spec Optima or Ultima trim level rather. Um, you can again add this as an extra but this would have been nice to have with perhaps the mid spec city trim. Um, again just helping people navigate out of those tight parking spaces if they need that help. So the VN5 comes with a number of different safety features. So you get hold assist, which is pretty essential. Uh, so that will stop the car for you as you come to a complete stop on a hill, which is great considering the amount of stuff you're gonna have in the back there in the load space. Uh, you also get uh, autonomous emergency braking. Brilliant for if you accidentally drive too close to a car in front of you, prevents you from rear-ending them. Uh, you get electronic stability control as well, as well as cruise control, really handy for driving along the motorway or a dual carriageway and you want to keep at a consistent speed. Okay guys, let's head back to our car park and I'll tell you a little bit more about the interior. Okay guys, I'm going to walk you through the interior a little bit, starting with the seats. So the driver and passenger seat get lumbar support as standard. However, if you opt for the top spec Ultima trim, you get fully adjustable seats with multi-directional lumbar support. That's what we've got here with this configuration because we added it as an optional extra. And it's really, really good. It allows you to find that perfect driving position. So I can go all the way down like this, pretty far down. But if we continue to climb up, you really, really do go high and that allows you to get a nice commanding view of the road ahead. The lumbar support is absolutely fantastic. So you just use a button to your right hand side there. See how high up I'm going. Um, that allows you to adjust the intensity of that lumbar support and it really digs into your back, but it is very, very, very comfortable. So the seats themselves, you know, the upholstery is nothing to shout about. It's pretty bog standard, pretty simple, but the material used is really durable, nice and spongy. So it's going to be quite hard to rip and while these seats are dirty at the moment, it is really easy to get that dirt off. Just grab like a, like a brush or something like that and they're just so easy to clean. I think you're going to be really impressed with these seats. They are very comfortable for long journeys. What's the steering wheel like then? Well, I mean the trim around it isn't anything to shout about. It's just a big bit of hard plastic really, but that gives you a nice bit of grip, especially when you want to take advantage of that hefty turning circle. Um, you're not going to have any problems with your hands slipping off or anything. So on the left hand side then you've got your cruise control controls and on the right you've got your controls uh, for media so you can pause, play, skip a track, answer, call hands free, stuff like that. Uh, right in the centre of the wheel then we've got the LEVC logo with some nice gloss black surround so it really brings out the design there really really nice just behind the steering wheel is the driver display which is absolutely massive it's the biggest driver display i've ever seen in a vehicle and it's absolutely brilliant the graphics are very sharp and it's really easy to see all that key information right where you need it to be so on the left hand side then uh, it shows how much fuel you've got left in your tank and how much charge is left in that battery in a really easy to understand way. In the center, you've got your traditional speedometer. That shows you how fast you're going, how many miles you've covered on your journey so far, how many miles in total, and whether you've accidentally left one of the doors open. That will show up in the center there. And on the right-hand side is for regen braking. So if you stick the car into that second stage of regen braking to really harvest as much energy back into the battery as possible, it will show you how efficient that energy recovery is being, which is really handy to have that information right in front of you. So yeah, I'm really impressed with how this is all laid out. It's very, very clear and the graphics really do pop. I'm very impressed. Undoubtedly, the highlight of this interior is this nine inch central touchscreen. Uh, LEVC has clearly taken some inspiration from Tesla um, when it comes to the design of this piece of technology. Um, it's basically a block right here in the center of the dashboard, though the screen itself just takes up about half of that block. Uh, it's surrounded by some gray plastic, and then as we get closer to the screen itself, it's framed by some nice gloss black material, which is very, very nice. Um, just below that, then we've got controls for the media and the dual zone climate. Nice to see that they're all physical buttons. Let's go back to the screen though. Absolutely love it. It's so easy to navigate between the different options. There's hardly any lag or latency. As you can see, I'm swiping there. It's so smooth. It's so precise with your input. 
you just select an option, it displays instantaneously. Really, really well implemented. So with this infotainment setup, you also get a DAB radio and Bluetooth connectivity. The Bluetooth is brilliant. It connects to my phone within about five seconds, so you can get straight on to listening to, to an album or a podcast or phoning one of your colleagues. It's really easy to set up, really, really well implemented. So if we swipe to the right-hand side screen then, this shows all of the different car functions, including the drive modes. So you can select between these while on the go. Uh, this option will be greyed out if you are stationary or the car's off. Uh, so this is very much something to select while traveling from A to B. Uh, there's three different options here though. So you have pure, and this allows the vehicle to run purely off of the energy stored in that battery. So this is perfect if you want to do zero emissions or all electric travel. So the next mode is smart, and this is the mode I recommend you have the vehicle in for the majority of your time. So this automatically manages energy use between the battery and the engine, ensuring that your travel is going to be as efficient as possible. So yeah, do stick the vehicle in this mode for the majority of your time. And lastly, we have save, and this stores battery energy for when you need it most. So for something like a motorway driving, when you're traveling at quite a high speed consistently, it will then kick into the battery for you. So yeah, some three really well implemented modes here, and you can switch between them using the screen. Once you've had a play around with the different settings, I do recommend that you set up a driver profile. Um, this is especially handy if you know perhaps two, maybe even three people are going to drive this vehicle as well, because you can save your seating configuration, your audio settings, and your driver settings to one of any three profile so that's great so if you know somebody's been driven the, driving this vehicle the night before you're getting it the next day just click your profile and everything will be set up to just how you like it love to see this feature in more vehicles and it's really well implemented here i do have about three complaints with the screen though so i do wish it was angled slightly more towards the driver so it's just that little bit more easy to see while on the move um, as i said earlier the graphics are really sharp and the options are nice and large uh, this would just be well, it's just a minor complaint really. Um, secondly though, the screen does get rather grubby, so that gloss material can get covered in your fingerprints and the screen itself can get covered in it as well, especially you notice this when the vehicle is off. So make sure to wipe that down with a microfiber cloth every now and again. And thirdly though, my biggest complaint is that the climate controls are um, controlled using the screen itself. Um, you do have options down here though, um, just under the screen to uh, blast the windscreen with some heating, uh, to perhaps get some condensation off of there, but it's, they're not the full extent of the climate options. You have to access those through the screen and that can be quite fiddly while on the move, unfortunately. So yeah, below the screen, got those buttons for some of the climate control settings and to control media. Uh, there's a nice big knob in the middle here for pausing and playing a track really really satisfying to use just below that then we've got a rather large center block here uh, for all your driving needs so this is the start stop button you just flick that to the right hand side and that will turn the ignition on and the car on as a result um, just below that then we've got the electronic parking brake and then we have the gear selector itself so at the moment it's in neutral that's the the middle option and you just push that up if you want to put it into reverse and if it is in reverse you then have to push it down back into neutral and then down again to put that into drive so it's really easy to use a very very well implemented automatic gearbox um, you can then switch the uh, gear selector to the left to take advantage of the first stage of regen braking or if you really want to maximize as much energy as possible stick it to the right for that two stage regen braking just below this protruding block of plastic then we've got a rather large storage area so this is where i love my keys and my phone i just put those down there there's lots of space to work with absolutely love that little bit of area there um, just behind that then you've got a couple of cup holders though these are purely made of plastic so that does make it difficult to fit in uh, bottles of this size like this one here so that comfortably fits into my door bin so that be um, has enough space there to hold a bottle of around 750 mils which is great it really comfortably fits into there but here I really do have to shove it in and it still not going in it's not fitting that's not happening so that is a little bit unfortunate but it will be enough room for something like a uh, cup of coffee or tea or something like that it'd be absolutely fine just behind that then we've got a, another cavernous storage area uh, but that also has a couple of USB ports and a 12 volt socket for charging an appliance such as an extra phone uh, a laptop or something like that so I really like the practicality on offer here. The plastic used down here feels a little bit cheap, though it is hard and it is durable, but um, practicality, can't fault it, great stuff. 
There's a few other storagey bits dotted around the cabin. So just above me on the driver's seat, there's a nice area for your glasses, sunglasses, magazines. Goes back really far, so you could probably fit quite a lot in there. Um, between the driver and passenger seat, you've got a nice bit of netting for holding those items that like to roll around in place. Um, on the passenger side then, you've got where a glove box would typically be, quite a cavernous space. As you can see there, my hand's going quite far down. Again, handy for lobbing some items in there. And just down here, Below the passenger seat, we've got a secret storage area. Again, goes back really far. I only found out about this about half an hour ago, so if you want to hide some sweets from your colleague, that is where you need to put them. So aside from the plastic that is pretty much covering this interior, I'm really impressed with what's on offer here. The screen is fantastic, and there's lots of different cubby holes for storing lots of different bits and bobs. But let me know what you make of the interior in the comments below. I think it's about time we hop out then and we're gonna pop open the bonnet and we're gonna talk about the engine and powertrain that's on offer and how much range you get from that battery. Let's find out. So to pop that bonnet, we need to head round to the passenger side because there's a latch just underneath the fake glove box. So let's open that up. It's really well hidden all the way underneath. Pull that a couple of times. The vehicle will alert you that the bonnet is now unlatched and we can head round and fling that open. It's just another lever, just here on the right hand side. If you push up to your left, it will then fly up for you. Thankfully it holds up on its own. Great stuff. So there's just one drivetrain available with the VN5. It's a hybrid powertrain that sends power all the way to those rear wheels and it's made up of a combination of that drive battery and the range extender. So the drive battery has a 31 kilowatt hour capacity and it produces around 110 kilowatts of power and 250 newton meters of torque. Then we have that range extender. So that's the small 1.5 liter petrol engine and that produces around 89 horsepower and 160 newton meters of torque. So both of those things work in harmony to get this car from A to B. Um, though compared to its rivals, it is a little bit disappointing that there is just one setup to choose, well, not even to choose from, you're stuck with it really. This van is unlikely to break records on the Nürburgring, but if you were to launch it, it will take around 13.2 seconds to get up from naught to 62 miles per hour. Uh, because it's part electric, if you put your foot down on the accelerator, you get an instant hit of acceleration and torque. So that's enough to comfortably overtake cars on a dual carriageway or motorway. So you don't worry, this won't be meandering sluggishly in that left lane. It does have power to get you off the block. Um, top speed then, we're looking at 80 miles per hour. So again, you probably wouldn't want to go over that anyway if you've got a lot of stuff in the back there. But yeah, it's not the fastest van out there, but the performance is fine. It's quite enjoyable. So what's the range like and how efficient is that battery? Well, in pure EV mode, so just using the electric power stored inside that battery, you can get a range of up to 60.9 miles, which is really good. I mean, if you live in a city and you know that your commute is just around 60 miles, perhaps even under, you can do that via electric power, which is great to see. Uh, LEVC also quotes a city electric driving range of 75 0.9 miles though you should take this figure with a grain of salt this depends on, on a variety of conditions such as the road conditions being absolutely perfect the weather being lovely and you're probably going to be in stuck in a start stop traffic your entire journey so yeah not one to focus your buying decision on I'm, i would definitely focus on that 60 mile figure and see if it works for you see if it's suitable for your um, lifestyle so total driving range then, we're looking at around 304 miles when we take into account the combination of the battery and the uh, range extender engine there. So really good stuff actually for a van of this size. LEVC also quotes an official fuel economy figure of uh, 313.9 miles per gallon. Obviously really impressive stuff. Uh, that means this van is much more efficient than its main rival, the Ford Transit Custom in its two litre diesel configuration. If you're thinking about getting the VN5 as your next company vehicle, then that's great because this van outputs just 21 grams per kilometre of CO2 and that places it in quite a low benefit in kind tax bracket for 2022 to 2023. So you could take advantage of some great tax benefits there. This is also a really good option if you're not quite ready to switch fully to electric, but you want to take advantage of plug-in hybrid power and just see if that works for you with that drive battery and the range extending um, engine there. So if you do want to try out electric, 
um, and you're happy to do so with hybrid, then this is a really good option. It's time to talk charging, so let's pop open that flap once again. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can charge this van. You can plug it in overnight uh, to a standard three pin plug and it'll fully top up for you, ready for you the next morning. Uh, you can also plug it into your seven kilowatt wall box if you have one installed at home. Uh, and that will do a 0-100% charge in around 3 hours and 45 minutes. Not too bad at all. Uh, if you do need it to charge a little bit faster though, it does support 11 kilowatt AC fast charging, as it says on the top of the flap there. And that will do a 0-100% charge in around 2 hours 20 minutes. Again, pretty good, pretty quick. Um, you can also configure support for 22 kilowatt AC fast charging. Uh, you can add this as an optional extra for around 996 pounds. And it also comes as standard with the Ultima trim. And that will allow this van to charge for 0 to 100% in just one hour and 15 minutes. Very, very speedy indeed. If you find yourself traveling up the country and you desperately need to pull over at a service station somewhere to juice this bad boy back up to 100%, then do take advantage of the 50 kilowatt DC rapid charging support because that will top up the battery fully in just 30 minutes. So absolutely brilliant. You can grab some lunch, grab a coffee and be on your way. So that's it for charging guys and overall details on the drivetrain. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. Um, if you'd like to discuss this a little bit more further with one of our vehicle specialists, we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. So do make sure to get in touch on 01903 538 835 alternatively you can click the pop-up banner up there to book a consultation at a time and date that works best for you okay guys i'm going to run you through the different trim levels now and the options available so you can get the most out of your vn5 configuration Okie dokie guys, let's talk about the uh, trim levels on offer. So there's three different trim levels to choose from. Uh, the entry level option is business. This starts from £46,500 and this is the recommended retail price for the vehicle. Um, if we take into account though the £5,000 plug-in grant that the government currently offers at the time of recording this vehicle, this does drop the price down to around £41,500, not too bad for a premium large van though uh, it's likely that this plug-in grant is going to reduce even further as the years go on so if you want up-to-date pricing on the VN5 do get in touch with one of our vehicle specialists. So you get a reasonable amount of equipment with this trim level uh, this includes the nine inch touchscreen that you saw inside the cabin and I'm a massive fan of how that's been implemented. Uh, you get cruise control as well so it's really easy to set a consistent speed when traveling up a motorway or dual carriageway. Uh, you get auto LED headlights, so they turn on automatically when you get inside the van, so that's great. It's something you don't have to worry about enabling yourself. Uh, you get those three different driving modes, that Pure EV, the uh, Smart, and the Save. So it's great to see that they come with the standard spec. And you get a host of safety features as well, and that includes automatic emergency braking, uh, electronic stability control, and forward collision warning. So pretty standard safety options there. You'd find those in a lot of uh, entry-level vehicles, but it's great that they are included with this van. So yeah, if you're not too bothered about maximizing the full potential of your VN5 configuration and you're happy with these uh, standard equipment options, then yeah, this is a really good choice. Next up the ladder, we have the middle child, and that is City. Uh, prices for this trim level start from £48,500 and you get one piece of equipment that really should have been included with that standard spec and those are front and rear parking sensors. Uh, you also get a heated windscreen so that's especially handy on those cold winter mornings. It's going to save you a bunch of time especially if you've got to rush off to a job. Just stick that on and it'll clear the windscreen for about two minutes or so. Really really handy. You also get a more extensive suite of safety features courtesy of the safety pack. Uh, these include road sign information so when you've tracked a course from A to B this will uh, show up all the different road signs in the area so it's especially handy if you're not familiar uh, to where you're traveling to. Uh, you also get lane departure warnings, so the car will alert you if you find yourself just accidentally drifting over those white lines. So that could be quite handy when you're first getting used to a vehicle of this size. Uh, you also get the speed limit intelligent function, so it will show you uh, the speed limit of the area that you're driving which also could be really handy. Uh, inside this cargo space then uh, it will be fully cladded so that could be an essential feature for you and you get a 12 volt uh, socket as well so if you like to plug in any electronics while working um, this also could be an essential option. So some nice equipment then with this mid range trim level. 
Last up, we have the big boy. That is Ultima. That's a top spec trim level, and prices start from 52000 500 pounds and if you really want to maximize the potential of your vn5 configuration then this is the trim that you must choose so you get a couple of uh, features that enhance the overall design of the van uh, that's that includes the uh, charcoal gray metallic paint option which is really really gorgeous uh, you get body colored front and rear bumpers as well just complementing that further plus silver steel wheels replacing the wheels that we have with this configuration and they look much nicer in my opinion. Inside the cabin then the driver and passenger seat are now fully electrically adjustable and heated so perfect for those cold winter days. Uh, you get satellite navigation installed on that infotainment display plus the rear view camera. I really don't like how this is locked behind the top spec trim level. It would have been good to have this perhaps in city, that uh, middle range option that we have with this particular configuration. But at the end of the day, it isn't an essential feature. Uh, that turning circle plus the very large mirrors make it quite easy to get into and out of even the tightest spaces, which is great for a vehicle of this size. Um, in this cargo area then, you get eight tie loops, which is really handy to strap things down while on the move. Plus you get support for 22 kilowatt AC fast charging. So if you know you're going to be using this van every single day, uh, traveling perhaps 50 to 60 miles every day, exhausting that battery by the end of it, then this could be an essential, an essential option for you. Once you've chosen your ideal trim level, then there's a bunch of personalization options, you know, optional extras and add-ons that you can configure to really get the most out of your particular VN5. So my personal highlights include another side loading door, so beyond this side here, um, that is an optional extra, It'll set you back around 708 pounds. Um, you can get silver steel wheels as well with the business and city trims as an optional extra. And you can also delete the bulkhead here, the floor, and even one of the side doors if you want to. So you can really get the most out of the VN5 to suit your particular needs. There's also a number of different packs available such as driver, styling, comfort, and luxury that group a variety of different features together that share common interests into a nice affordable package so if you'd like to explore those a bit more further with one of our team then do get in touch on 01903 538 835 okay guys that's it for trim levels let's hop out the back to wrap up ow this review so should you buy lease or finance an levc vn5 well there are some great advantages to doing so you can take advantage of some really brilliant range that combined range of 300 miles is absolutely fantastic for somebody who commutes long journeys every day but you can also take advantage of that 60 mile pure electric range perfect for short commutes around the city so this levc van is really ideal for two different kinds of drivers really you also benefit from a commanding road presence and great vis visibility of what's ahead of you and behind you the cabin is very spacious and comfortable i like that levc haven't crammed in a middle seat there's lots of cubby holes as a result and the practicality on offer is fantastic and that infotainment screen absolutely brilliant really easy to use it isn't laggy at all has all the options right where you need it and yeah, the tech has been really well implemented. The VN5 also offers a really generous loading space, though it's not quite as much as you'll find with some of its key rivals. Uh, you can cram a lot of stuff into the back of this van, plus 100 kilograms on the roof, which is always great to see. Uh, but my two favorite parts of the VN5 are firstly, the really fun driving experience, and that is courtesy of how well that automatic transmission has been implemented. It offers a really smooth and relaxing drive, whether you're moseying along a narrow city street or cruising along a seamlessly never-ending um, dual carriageway or motorway. You're going to enjoy both kinds of driving experience. Um, but my personal highlight is that class-leading turning circle of 10.1 meters. Wow, this is what really sets this van apart from its competition. Just so easy to park as a result. That's kind of an anxiety that is lifted for you immediately. And yeah, if you really want a van that kind of maneuvers like a small little city car, then I think this is really your only option. There are some cons to consider though. This is LEVC's first van, so naturally it's gonna have a few drawbacks. Uh, firstly is the price. So it does cost considerably more than this uh, van's key rival. So you have to weigh up 
whether the load space on offer, the excellent drivetrain and turning circle are going to be worth it for you. While I do absolutely love the drivetrain, I wish there were a few more options here to choose from, perhaps even a larger battery or larger engine, uh, just to vary things a little bit more for different kinds of customers. When it comes to the interior then, so I'm a little bit disappointed with the lack of premium materials when compared to some of this uh, van's rivals, you know, offerings from Mercedes. It's a little bit plasticky in there, considering the price tag of the vehicle. When it comes to visibility, overall very, very good, as I said, but that side pillar can be a little bit distracting when you come to a junction or a roundabout. That is something you definitely need to get used to. Um, the learning curve here is a little bit more significant than you'll find with other medium-sized vans. Uh, so that is something to take into account as well. And there are no parking sensors as standard, which is a little bit disappointing. You know, if you are used to a vehicle of this size, that won't be an issue for you. But if you are making that transition from a smaller van or even a car to this medium sized van, that will take a little bit of adjusting. But overall, I'm really impressed with the overall package. You know, this is LEVC's very first van. Um, there are lots of improvements that they could make with a subsequent refresh and a next generation model. But as it stands, the overall package is very, very impressive. And if you are looking for a medium sized van, this is a really excellent option. So guys, if you'd like to find out more about the LEVC VN5 and explore your options more closely with one of OSV's vehicle specialists, then do be sure to pick up your phone and dial 01 903 538 835, or you can click the pop-up banner, it's just up there, I'm just touching it now, to book a date or time for a quick chat with one of our team. Hope you enjoyed this delicious taste of the VN5, guys. If you did, make sure to give this video a massive thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more in-depth vehicle reviews as well as other motoring content. And once you are subscribed, do not neglect the bell because once clicked, you're going to get notified as soon as a new video goes live. But that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. Take care, guys. Oh, and safe driving. <laughs>